thank you very much, Honorable Premier Van Samery, distinguished representative of the Nevis Island Administration. I also want to recognize the Honorable Sam Conda, member for St. Christopher III, the Honorable Sean Richards, member for St. Christopher V, Honorable Eugene Hamilton, member for St. Christopher VIII, Senator Vincent Byron, the incoming elected member for St. Christopher IV, Lindsey Grant, and the incoming member
and his government will cease will cease to have the right to govern the constitution expressly not only provides that on such a vote the prime minister is to either resign or else parliament is dissolved but it also expresses an urgency that should follow such a vote of no confidence it would therefore make nonsense of these provisions if a majority of the members of the elected representatives may have lost confidence in the government and been ready and willing to vote on such a motion have requested that such a motion be placed under order paper but no steps i repeat no steps are being taken to have such a motion debated and voted on within a reasonable time as a matter of priority end of quote we believe in the context of this ruling no business of parliament ought to be transacted by the minority regime other than that to do with this motion of no confidence people of St. Kitts and Nevis are rightly disturbed that this regime without a constitutional basis to govern has summoned the parliament for next Monday August 18 as if that was not bad enough and repulsive enough this imposter regime has again showed scant regard for the law of the land by short serving the majority of members of parliament instead of providing us the requisite at least seven days notice of the parliamentary sitting the lawless regime provided us on tuesday the 12th august notice of a meeting to be held on the 18th august 2014 to mask their dishonesty the said notice which is dated incidentally august 8 2014 is delivered by the hand of the very clerk of the house charged with dispatching it at least seven clear days in advance the basis of this provision is to give members of parliament adequate advance notice of parliamentary meetings this of course is especially important where parliament meets in the ad hoc way it does here rather than regularly as say in the united kingdom jamaica trinidad and tobago would it take the clerk of the national assembly four days to walk from church street to fourth street to deliver a mail why deliver a letter dated the 8th of august and the 12th of august another breach that we observe in the said notice is where it stated that the parliament will start at 9 a.m our reference to the law indicates that parliament convenes no earlier than 10 a.m it will be decidedly wrong if a parliament were to make a mockery of the very laws it passes we are a country with the rule of law and not the rule of men. All then must respect the law, especially those who have taken an oath to do so. Men must respect the law. When laws are bad or in need of reviewing, it is the duty of the lawmakers to change them. These breaches of the law in relation to the notice in our view are significant in and by themselves but they are even more grave when construed in the context of a systematic pattern of lawlessness serial breaches of the constitution relating to the motion of no confidence on the section 52 the appointment of a deputy speaker section 32 delaying of estimates within the pres prescribed time of the beginning of the year and the denial of course of our rights 
to hold public meetings contrary to the sections of our Constitution. We are fast becoming, regrettably, a lawless state where one delusional man thinks that our country is his and he will do what he likes, when he likes, and no quote, no chamber of industry and commerce, no Christian council, no evangelical association, indeed in his delusional head, not even the people can stop him. We of this country cherish democracy. We want democracy. We do not want dictatorship. We want respect for our laws, not disdain for our laws. We, in team unity, strongly urge the people to stand up, to take a stand for their democracy before all is lost. Now it is the selective upholding of the laws and our constitution. Next time will it be the use of the coercive arms of the state to frame opponents, to harass them and lock them up. Next time will we hear of the use of the VAT office and by extension the Inland Revenue Department to harass opponents of the government. We must not give in to this, and we must take a stand to stop this creeping dictatorship. We, in Team Unity, are committed to do the very best for this country that we love. Things must be done better, a whole lot better, and our country's standard must never be the least common denominator of behavior of conduct, of leadership, of accountability, and democracy. That is why Team Unity will ensure that there is no hide-and-seek with parliamentary matters, no sneaking in of matters, no short notice, short service, sorry, of notice to the opposition. And we are prepared that all documents for parliament including the other paper and accompanying bills are to be served on each member of parliament at least clear seven working days in advance of parliament. This would bring a serious advancement and improvement to the way in which parliamentary matters are being handled. We are prepared for a parliament properly meeting to pass bills with a majority of elected MPs on the government side proposing and the minority of elected MPs constructively or otherwise opposing. Team unity in government will act as the most responsible government that we know and we think that our people deserve. We will not stifle our conscience to the mockery taking place now, where an illegitimate minority of five proposes legislation for the lawful majority of six. This is anathema to majority rule and to the principle so fundamental to representative democracy. We in Team Unity cannot condone it. We forcefully condemn it. It makes a mockery of Parliament, and it is indeed a tragedy, nay, it is a travesty. We serve notice that we do not consider ourselves bound by any agreement, not in the public interest, made by this illegitimate regime, since our letters to the Governor General indicating lack of support for the incumbent as Prime Minister. We serve notice that having regard to Randani's judgment that this government has no right to be passed in laws, it is an imposter. It is a regime blinded by its outdated and corrupt modes of governance best amplified in petty dictatorships. It is a regime 
consumed with keeping our people down and then attempting to buy their votes at election time. This is a recipe for permanent underdevelopment and poverty. No wonder then there is so much hardship and suffering in St. Kitts. These are the things which we must change. To change these things, we must elect a team unity government. Let us take a stand now, because tomorrow may be too late. We shall elaborate more on what our citizens should do at our public meeting carded for Sunday, the 17th August, at Market Street, Bastia. We ask our citizens to be prepared to replace this illegitimate government at the soonest available time. This government has lost its way. We will work with the people to redeem our country and uphold the laws of the land and our constitution. May God bless all the people of Schenkitz and Nevis. Thank you.